Hello, I'm Tommy McGarra Sharp, Chair of the Staff Parish Relations Committee here at Glen. We've reached a bittersweet Sunday in the life of our church, where we are saying goodbye to Reverend Blair Settner. Staff Parish is very grateful to Blair for the 11 years she has served on our church staff as youth minister and in the last year as minister to young adults. We will miss you and we wish you all the best. Thank you.
to this gathering of God's people called Glen Memorial United Methodist Church. It is good to be together on this Sunday morning and this, uh, as we continue into the season of Pentecost. Uh, we give thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit that makes of us the church. And today is a, a special Sunday too because it is Blair Settner's last Sunday with us. She will bring the sermon this morning and I want to remind you that uh, at 2.30 this afternoon she and her family are planning to be right outside the sanctuary in the drive through outside the front of the sanctuary and you're invited to drive by and uh, express your love for them and to uh, wave and show some signs if you want, wear a, a t-shirt from one of the ministries you've shared with Blair if you'd like to do that. But it's not the same as getting together and having a great party and celebration, but at least it gives us a chance to uh, express our love for her. Also uh, today, I want to thank you, those of you who have responded to our survey on how we will and when we will get back together in this sanctuary. I appreciate your thought and your care that you've shown to that, and I promise you we are showing care and thought and prayer as well. It is not a simple process. It is not a simple decision. And so we are working to do the very best we can in these trying days. So we welcome you to this time of worship. All that we do in this hour is a gift to God. And what you bring is important. So bless you and may you know the love of Christ in this hour. Well, good morning and welcome. Let us begin our worship together with a word of prayer. O oh God, our guide and guardian, you have led us apart from the busy world into the quiet of your house. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in truth, to the comfort of our souls, and the upbuilding of every good purpose and holy desire. Enable us to do more perfectly the work to which you have called us, that we may not fear the coming of the night, when we shall resign into your hands the tasks which you have committed to us. So may we worship you not with our lips at this hour, but in word and deed all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Good morning. Please join us in our opening hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. You'll be able to find the lyrics at the bottom of your screen.
Good morning. Well, here we are in Pentecost season, like we learned last week, where the Holy Spirit is with us, helping us to be Jesus' followers, disciples. Jesus told us to go and make disciples, followers of Jesus of all nations. So it doesn't matter your skin color or where you were born. We are all beloved children of God. And that is something really special at Glen Church that we celebrate and we honor and we do our best to make sure that every single person knows that they are a special child of God. Now, one of our favorite special children of God families is Reverend Blair Setner and her husband Shane and our friends Jeffrey and Wes. And today is a little bit of a sad day because it's their last Sunday as a part of our Glen Church family here. But they are always a part of our Glen Church family and our United Methodist Church family and the Church of Jesus Christ all over the world. They are going to a new place to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Thankfully, not too far, just down the road in Decatur. So we might still get to see them in the community and be friends with them, but they are going to share God's love in a new and different way at Decatur First Methodist while we keep spreading God's love here at Glen Memorial. Because we want everyone in Decatur, in Druid Hills, in Atlanta, all across the world to know that everyone is a special child of God. It doesn't matter what you look like or where you were born or what the color of your skin is. We are all children of God. And we thank Reverend Blair for helping us learn that in very real ways for all of the years of each of your lives. And we love Jeffrey and Wes, and we're going to miss them and Mr. Shane. And we send our love and prayers as we each go and make disciples wherever you are in the name of Jesus Christ. Have a great week. Hear these words from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. May God bless the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Source of all we hope or dread Sheepdog, jackal, rattler, swan We hunt your face and long to trust That your hid mouth will say again let there be light, a clear new day. But when we thirst in this dry night, we drink from hot wells poisoned with the blood of children. And when we strain to hear a steady homing, Our ears are balked by stifled moans and howls of desolation from the throats of sisters, brothers, wild men, clawing at the gates for bread. Even our own feeble hands ache to seize the crown. private havoc through the known and unknown lands of space. Absolute in flame beyond us, seed and source of dark and day, maker whom we beg to be, our mother, father, Our few atoms blow to dust or form again in wiser lives or find your face and hear our name in your calm voice the end of night if dark may end well spring gold of dark and day be here, be now. 
Hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. May God bless the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Well, this is my last Sunday as one of your associate pastors here at Glen. This is a bittersweet time, especially in the midst of this pandemic, where I can't see you and hug you. So this past week, to help create some kind of closure for myself, I decided I would walk the grounds and do a little ritual around these sacred spaces. It looked like this. A prayer of thanksgiving, a time of reflection and remembering, and then I would end with a blessing and commissioning. I started at the kneeling rail. I walked the length, admiring each handcrafted, amazingly detailed and beautiful cushion. I touched the railing and thought of all the hands that had grasped it. Hands that rested with palms up and open, waiting for the grace of the bread and the cup. And I remembered serving communion to a dear friend who had just lost his son. Tears mingled with the bread I placed in his hand, and I remembered feeling connected to him and to Christ and to the unconditional love of God in that moment. And I remembered the times I knelt here to pray, asking for guidance, grace, healing, and forgiveness for myself, for this church, for the United Methodist Church, and for you. I remembered this and so much more. Thank you, I remember. I have been changed and I will take this with me. And of course the pulpit, the space where I have heard the unconditional, inclusive and liberating love of Christ proclaimed. I remembered prophetic words of justice and calls for peace and action. I remembered our Bishop of the North Georgia Conference, Bishop Sue Hoppert Johnson, bang her hands on the wood and proclaim Black Lives Matter four years ago. I remembered convicting words and words of hope, especially in the midst of chaos and pain. I remembered preaching my very first sermon here and several more after that, trying different styles and finding my own voice. I remember this and so much more. Thank you, I remember. I have been changed and I will take this with me. And this space, the altar, the baptismal font, these stairs where our children gather. I remembered receiving my red ordination stole from the youth the year I was ordained as a deacon. I remembered sobbing through youth Sundays watching our seniors lead and share authentically. I remembered Confirmation Sundays and squeezing the shoulder of a seventh grader as they proclaimed and committed to following Jesus Christ. I remembered participating in baptisms and watching that holy moment when a baby, a child, an adult is adopted into the family of God and this church community together committing to walking with and supporting that person and their faith journey forever. I remember Pastor Mark inviting us to gather around the font, each of us reaching out and touching the person ahead of us, who was touching the person in front of them, who was touching the font and the baptismal waters. All of us connected, 
reaffirming our baptismal vows as we sang, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. I remember this and so much more. Thank you. I remember. I have been changed and I will take this with me. In the church school building, I walked here to the Ward Fellowship Hall. In this sacred space, I remembered conversations over meals, exhausted parents plopping down while kids played together, adults connecting over coffee, and learning from amazing summer lecturers. I remembered our very first Sunday evening worship service and the transformation of that space and what is now known as the gathering. I remembered packing backpacks of food for school children, building sets for youth plays, doing lots and lots of makeup, and watching youth blossom on stage. I remember this and so much more. Thank you. I remember. I have been changed and I will take this with me. Next, I moved upstairs to the parlor where I sat on this squishy yellow couch and remembered new mamas and babies gathered for the Elizabeth Circle and grief support groups and our lay ministry meetings. I remembered sweet Carolyn Roper teaching me how to knit, though I wasn't good at it, at the Lydia Circle, one of our most precious ministries at Glen. And I remembered some really difficult conversations and meetings in this space, too. I remember this and so much more. Thank you. I remember. I have been changed and I will take this with me. There are other spaces that I visited. Our beloved youth building, the balcony, the choir loft, my bright yellow office and of course, this beautiful space, our little chapel. But mostly, dear friends, I remembered and am thankful for you. The relationships I have made here have given me so much. You and the moments we've shared have been the sacred and holy spaces where I have encountered Christ. The conversations, the hugs, the acceptance of all of me, my flaws included, you have shown me radical hospitality and you've walked beside me through almost a third of my life. You have been Christ to me. In today's text from the Gospel of Matthew, the writer says that when the disciples encountered Jesus, some worshipped and some doubted. The New American Bible translates this as when they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. So worship and doubt coexist here. The disciples, Jesus' tightest friends, are in the presence of the risen Christ, and they both worship and doubt. And I love this because it recognizes that there is, that there can, and there will be doubt, even in the midst of our worship. Doubt does not diminish or deflect from worship. Rather, all of us, all of who we are, our flaws, our doubts included, are welcome when we encounter Christ. And this has certainly been my experience here at Glen. All of me, my doubts, my flaws, have been accepted and welcomed. And I have experienced Christ through you. At our young adult Bible study this past Tuesday night, I read our lectionary text this week and asked what words or phrases stuck out. And many agreed that it's Jesus' words. And remember, I am with you always, even until the end of the age, that are particularly comforting this week. Isn't that so? Through tragedy and heartache, uncertainty and chaos, I remember that this community has been by my side. Again, I have experienced Christ through you. And it has been beautiful to watch you show up for one another and for people and places that need Christ. That has never been more apparent than during this season. 
the violence towards black and brown persons, and the blatant racism and white supremacy that exists in this country has devastated families and communities and left our black brothers and sisters exhausted and traumatized. Not to mention we're in a pandemic where more than 36 million people have lost their jobs and over 100,000 people have lost their very lives. These are hard times. We need the comforting words of Jesus Christ. I am with you always, even until the end of the age. And if you're searching for something to do, a meaningful way to respond to the injustice that continues to happen, our Racial Justice Caucus has sent out a five-day action plan, ways to resist evil, injustice, and oppression for our congregation. Whether you have a minute or an hour each day, there are ways that you can learn and respond. It is a way for you to be Christ. Because when you show up, you welcome, you accept, you learn, and you love unconditionally. So thank you. I remember I have been changed by you, and I will take this with me. Now she had gone to Glen Memorial that place where Jesus had directed her. When she was there, she worshiped and she doubted. She tried new things and failed. She messed up. She loved deeply. She laughed endlessly. She grew up. And Jesus came to her through that community and they recognized and gave her authority to make disciples. They taught her to trust herself. They pushed her to find her voice. They learned together, uncovering new ways to obey Jesus, to love God and love others. And one day, that community blessed her and commissioned her for a new season of ministry. And she knew that they would always be with her because she had learned through them that Christ would always be with her. So she said, thank you. I remember. I will take this with me. Thank you so much, Glenn. I love you, I miss you, and I am so grateful. We believe in God, the creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe God help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom and the upholding of human dignity and community in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough, in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory be to God on high, and on earth be peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith. Through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference. Through the misuse of power in personal, communal, and international life. Through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence. Through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace, with justice and freedom. To risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love. Praying that God's kingdom may come. That kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. As we come to our time of offering, again, I express uh, on behalf of all the ministers of our church, our gratitude to you for your support of this church, for your faithfulness in giving, by what you do here in your offering. Uh, makes possible the work we do in the world. So thank you for that. I also want to remind you that we uh, are wrapping up pretty soon our love offering for Dr. Timothy Albrecht and the Reverend Blair Settner, both of whom are leaving us. 
And so uh, we want to send them away with a gift and with our love as they go from here. So you can still do that either online. Uh, there's a place to give there. Or you can uh, write a check and mark that love offering and divide it as you wish. Or simply we will divide it between the two. But thank you for that. Can you hear the prayer of the children on bended knee in the shadow of an unknown room? Empty Turning heavenward toward the light, crying, Jesus, help me to see the morning light of one more day. But if I should die before I wake, I pray my soul to take. Can you hear the hearts of the children? something of their very own. Reaching hands with nothing to hold on to, but hope for a better day, a better day. But if unknown roads lead away from home, give me loving arms away from harm. Can you hear the prayer of the children? shadow of an unknown room, empty eyes with no more tears to cry, turning heavenward toward the We come to our time of prayer this morning, and before we move into the prayer, I just want to take a moment uh, to say how grateful I am for the past two years that I've shared in ministry here with Blair. Um, Blair is a joy. You know that. Uh, she brings a, a wonderful spirit to everything she does. She has a, mar a remarkable sense of humor, and she, uh, she cares about people. And that comes through everything she does. And so I will miss her. I will miss the time I have had with her. And I, uh, I pray that her ministry and, and her family will be blessed in this next chapter. Um, I look forward to following her ministry through the years because I know that Blair will do good things as she has done good things here and that she will grow even more in ministry in the years ahead. So. Uh, exciting times lie ahead for her and for her family, and I know for Decatur First United Methodist Church. 
So, with that in mind, let's turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we gather in our different spaces this morning, but we gather in prayer, bound by your Spirit that joins us, bound by concerns for our world and our community, bound by a sense of thanksgiving, and bound also by an awareness of our own needs, our own brokenness, and our desire for your healing in our lives. We are joined this morning, too, with thanksgiving for the ministry of Blair Sadler. And so we do indeed pray, O oh God, that you would bless her and Shane and the boys and surround them with your love in this time of transition, but go with them all the way down the road. And whatever, O oh Lord, awaits them, we pray that they will know your strength, your grace, your spirit in their lives, and that they will know our love with them. That love will never be broken, and we walk with them wherever they are. We cannot come to you in prayer, O oh God, without lifting up to you the brokenness of our world, the injustices that need to be righted, we seek, O oh God, peace. We seek, O oh Lord, your healing in our nation and in our world and in our community. And we seek, O oh God, your healing in our own souls. All that keeps us from living together in grace, in equality, in mercy, and in love. O oh God, transform us, renew us, empower us to speak truth and to empower justice in this world. We pray again today for the gift of the Holy Spirit that can enable our speech and our actions, but also our hearing. Open our minds, our souls, our hearts to the truth, to the truth all around us. Help us, O oh Lord, to see things as they are, not as we wish they were or as we imagine they might have been at one time but as they are, O oh God, and help us to be a force for good in bringing about your will for healing and true community. We pray also, O oh God, that you would open our ears to the others, to our African-American brothers and sisters, to all people who are different from us, that we might hear each other, that we might understand the experiences of each other, and that we might find together your direction and your will. Help us, O oh God, to hear each other's stories that we might write a new story in your spirit and in your love. Be with all who hurt right now. There are so many who grieve still in the wake of this pandemic. There are so many who have been barred from seeing the people they love most. And we pray, O oh God, for a comfort and peace there. And we pray, Lord, that we might find our way through this pandemic and we might find healing and guard and protection as we move beyond. And as a church, see, guide us, O oh God, to make the decisions we need to make on how to be together and when to be together. Help us, O oh Lord, to seek the good of each other. Always, O oh God, help us to seek the good of each other in everything we do. Move our eyes beyond ourselves to our neighbors, to our brothers and sisters in Christ, and to the strangers in our midst. Help us to love as Christ loved. For it is in his name that we pray, remembering the words he himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Please join us in our closing hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory.
we've heard a marvelous sermon from Blair this morning, and we've uh, had an opportunity to pray for her just a bit, but now we want to turn to a, a more formal liturgy that our United Methodist Church provides for us, uh, and as a congregation, say our farewell to Blair. But before we enter into the formal uh, liturgy, uh, I want to, I had a chance to say a little bit about Blair before my pastoral prayer this morning, but the other uh, clergy here haven't had a chance to say anything, and so uh, I'm going to turn it over to them and see if they would like to say just a few words to Blair before we, before we conclude. Brent? I think Connor will go first. Oh, okay, Connor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, um, I tried to think of just one memory to narrow it down to, but um, between all the retreats we've been on together and all of the trips and all of the UMYFs, uh, I couldn't narrow it down to just one. Um, but I am just immensely grateful for this quality in Blair that she has for people to disarm people and for them to be able to take off their mask of not you know, pretending to be perfect all the time. Um, Blair has a gift for just allowing people to be themselves and be okay with it. And I think that's God, God's grace at work. So I'm immensely grateful to Blair for that. Thank you. I, uh, with a lot of people in the church, um, I'm thankful for Blair as a friend and a confidant. And for me, a, a pastoral presence in my life. Um, that is a, a hard thing sometimes for pastors to be close to other pastors in ways that, um, I don't know, with a system and the way people move and just the way it all works. Sometimes it's hard. And Blair has been um, a friend and a confidant for me. And I'm grateful for what she has done at Glenn um, and the way she uh, just cares for people. And I look at the Young Adult Fellowship that um, I have the joy of, of of overseeing I guess now and I look at the way that that group has come together and the way they care for each other and the growth that we've seen in the last year and um and that that is because of, of Blair's love and leadership and the way that she speaks to people and so I'm immensely grateful to to have worked with you and to have seen you work and now to get to carry on something that that you started and have done so well thank you well, I think this is the first time I've been grateful for the quarantine because I'm less likely to get emotional in this setting than I would if we were standing in worship together right now. But what a journey it's been for us, Blair. When we first met as you came to Glenn as a Candler student, still discerning your call to ministry, neither of us had any idea of what really the next decade would hold for us of ministry and life full of laughter and support that awaited us with many, many late night texts and emails. What a joy it has been to watch you grow into your calling as a pastor, um, to bear witness to your love as you and Shane became engaged and married and created your life together. And then, of course, as we stood by each other's side, literally and figuratively, as we welcomed our own children just six months apart from each other, twice. <laughs> While your job title and responsibilities have changed through the years, and that's kind of been a running joke, we can't even name all the things that Blair has led at Glenn. One thing that has stayed the same, as we've heard from others, is the Reverend Blair Bosta Setner has the grace and authenticity that just disarms you and makes you feel in real relationship with her and with the church and with God. And your passion and all that you do is your legacy of ministry at Glen, and we know will serve you well as you move forward from this place. And I'm really going to miss you, friend. Thank you. Well, as we uh, move into our United Methodist Liturgy of Farewell, um, I will simply introduce also Carol Allums, who is our chairperson for our church, uh, for our church council. And then Tommy McGarris Sharp is here also as our chair for our, our pastor parish, our staff parish relations committee. And so uh, Blair, we, uh, we as a congregation lay before you our love, our thanks, our memories, and, um, and we uh, 
as we move into this liturgy now, we offer everything that we have shared with you in these years as, our, as your gift to us, and as our gift to you, we send with you our love. And as an opening to this liturgy, uh, before the actual liturgy begins, uh, on behalf of the congregation, uh, I'd like to say thank you uh, from the bottom of all of our hearts to Blair for the enormous impact she has had on the life of this congregation over 11 years of uh, tireless work uh, with our youth and young adults and all of their families. And um, the impact you've had has been tremendous and will be felt for generations. So thank you um, from, the, from the congregation. Uh, the, the congregation has also uh, pulled together a love offering that we'll be presenting to you now. So uh, we send you with all of our love and all of our best wishes and don't be a stranger. Thank you. How will not? <laughs> now, Blair, if you will uh, move into the liturgy that we have before us here. I thank you, the members and friends of Glen Memorial United Methodist Church, for the love and support you have shown me while I have ministered among you. I am grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted. I ask for forgiveness for the mistakes I have made. And as I leave, I carry with me all that I have learned here. We receive your thankfulness offer forgiveness, and accept that you now leave to minister elsewhere. We express our gratitude for your time among us. We ask your forgiveness for our mistakes. Your influence on our faith and faithfulness will not leave with your departure. I accept your gratitude and forgiveness, and I forgive you, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. I release you from turning to me and depending on me. I encourage your continuing ministry here and I will pray for you. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose steadfast love for us is from everlasting to everlasting. We give you thanks for cherished memories and commend one another into your care as we move in new directions. Keep us one in your love forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you all for being a part of this uh, moment in worship. And now uh, to all of you at home, I remind you one more time that from 2.30 to 3.30, uh, you'll have a chance to drive by and, uh, and express your love and, and thanks to Blair in the front of the sanctuary and that uh, drive through there. Uh, her, she and her family will be there and we have one more chance to express our gratitude and our love. So we'll see you then. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Glenn. I love you. And I'm so, so grateful for these 11 years together. I miss you. And I will see you this afternoon, hopefully. Bye. Hello, I'm Tommy McGarrah-Sharp, Chair of the Staff Parish Relations Committee here at Glenn. We've reached a bittersweet Sunday in the life of our church, where we are saying goodbye to Reverend Blair Settner. Staff Parish is very grateful to Blair for the 11 years she has served on our church staff as youth minister and in the last year as minister to young adults. We will miss you and we wish you all the best.